Hello everybody and welcome back to A Taste of Donegal. So on the back of the tractor I've got the bale trailer with many straw bales. These are going to be sold straight away because they're taking up way too much space. We also need this trailer for the silage bales which is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be moving those bales. Um, there aren't too many. Oh yeah, I've just forgotten. The uh, tractor is still in the field. I've already moved that but the game crashed. <laughs> Sounds like a bad excuse but no, that is true. Um, I had to restart and then I totally forgot to move it again. So I'll have to do that off screen. Um, but yeah, the first challenging thing of today's episode is to reverse this bale trailer, which I find very hard to manoeuvre, up into a Homeland Store, I think it's called, um, and then into the cell point. It's just here. There is no way I can turn that corner. The only thing you can do is reverse up there. And I think I'm going to have to do that out of cab view because otherwise it's going to be impossible. So yeah, I might crash, bear with me. It could have been worse. Right, so that I believe is the bell cell point and hopefully if I set the unload position, which I tend to forget how to do, uh, I think you press number five first of all and then you choose the toggle side which is M and yeah, we need to we need to be about there. Then press O, and they're done. So we have got a tiny bit of money from that. Nothing really worth it, but it was more to clear space than anything else. So now we can go over to the field where the bales are, and we can begin to clear them. I can't turn right though, because the turning circle with the trailer is just not good enough. Now the plan of action regarding the bale spike is to get a slightly modded one. It is still the in-game model, but it has had one of the spikes removed, which sounds weird, but it is actually a big improvement because one thing I found before was if you have three spikes and you're only picking up two bales, the middle one gets completely in the way. So this is actually, although it sounds relatively simple, it is a good modification. And that is what we're gonna to use today. That is for a telehandler, so we'll be using that on the JCB. Uh, but yeah, hopefully it'll go smoothly. Also, yeah, you wouldn't normally spike a wrapped bale, but because we're going to sell them straight off, we can do. So here is our turning. Head into the field here. And then we'll move the tractor and bring the telehandler to the field. I would say about here is a good place for the trailer. The trailer is much bigger than anything we actually need to use, but I don't really have anything else, so it's the most suitable thing we have. Anyway, yeah, see you in one second. The trailer is moved and out of the way. This is the JCB, and as you can see, this is the standard bale spike. Essentially, it looks exactly the same. It might be slightly wider, not too sure, but this spike in the middle will have gone. And yes, this should really be a big improvement. I'm actually surprised to see that. It's the first time I've noticed that decibel label on there. 107 decibels. That sounds incredibly noisy for one of these. Maybe that is measuring it with the bucket on, banging about, not too sure. But yeah, it sounds quite noisy. Anyway, uh, yeah, we need to drop off the bell spike. We'll put it here. And we're going to go over to the store and buy the new one. Hopefully it won't be too much money. So the main objective of today's video is to basically make as much money as we possibly can do ready for the final episode, which will be next week, where we will be doing a bit of forestry in this forest just here, using, obviously, some forestry equipment. Um, I always like to finish a series with a bit of forestry. I think it's a good way to end you're not really leaving anything hanging. Like if you were doing harvesting and you, you, you're obviously harvesting the field for a reason to, to get the crop in and then to uh, after that get a new crop into the field. Um, but yeah it feels like you're sort of stopping in the middle of uh, a series if you do that. I think with forestry because it's another job it feels like a, a good conclusion if you get what I mean. 
Anyway, here we are. We'll have to see how much it costs. It's probably going to be, I don't know, about probably a thousand pounds. Hopefully it's not out of our price range. It should be in this category here. Good. 850, that sounds okay to me. We could rent it, but you know, we don't need to. We'll go in cab view and we'll get that attached. Okay, so over to field 26, which is our field we did the mowing in. And we'll begin to do a bit of stacking. Hopefully I'll be able to do this okay. Some days, I'm not too bad at stacking bales. Other days, you just don't want to see the video. It would be terrible. So hopefully today, I will be half decent. Obviously, there are quite a lot of really professional looking uh, bale stacking players on Farming Simulator, but I'm not one of them. Now because we've only got one job to do today, I don't know how long this video is going to be. Hopefully it's going to be the usual length, but I guess there is the potential for it to be a bit shorter than normal. So I apologise if it is, but obviously if it's the same length, then that's great. Uh, I just can't really predict how long a job is going to take. Obviously if I did this in real time, and showed the whole process of stacking, the video would be about two hours long. But I like to cut it down a bit make it a bit more enjoyable to watch. Right, so some of this is going to be done from out of cab view, possibly even all of it, because I think it will be easier for me. Come on, skewer. Oh, I know, the uh, hedge is in the way, the collision. So what I've done is I have just realigned it. I should make it easier to pick it up. Our trailer, yeah, you can't see out the back window too well. Our trailer is here. So I'll begin to load. Not too sure if you start from the back or not. I thought you do, but I can't say for sure. But it doesn't really matter anyway because we're going to have the uh, auto stack function enabled once we have put them on the trailer. I should be able to push these two and level it off a bit. It just depends if, because you know sometimes you get, they go sort of, um, they go sticky and they sort of uh, stay where they want to be and it will just push the entire trailer instead. But it seems that today that is not the case. That one almost went off. But yeah, certainly this mod is a drastic improvement from the original model, mainly because it's just got the middle spike removed. It makes such a big difference. I did manage to get those two on in the end. It was a bit of a, a tricky situation, but yes, it, it's much better. One thing I've also noticed, if you put four-wheel drive on, it does make the whole process of stacking onto the trailer a lot easier. Because if you don't put that on, the wheels just tend to, to slip and if you adjust the the boom so that they don't slip you tend to pull the bales off so it is a lot better although it is still very possible to knock them off the trailer as I've just found out um, but what I'm going to do is just change the loading the product type sorry uh, to I think it's round bales mixed and then if you press B yeah they automatically load onto there I then tend to detach them again, but only onto the trailer. So if I do that, but only keep them on the trailer, by pressing M, it then looks a bit more realistic, because you obviously only strap them on at the end. So yeah, although yeah, that is cheating, I have to say. 
Um, it makes the whole process a lot easier for me because I am terrible. I did warn you. That's why I don't really do too much work with bales. And when I do, I tend to use an auto sucker. So we did actually begin to start the calculations last week for what these would be worth. I think we established we had 10 bales, I think that's about right. Um, and if they're worth roughly £6,000 each, we'd get about £60,000, which is obviously really decent. Although, we did establish that there were two different price ranges for these bales. I think one of them is smaller, and it's about five, five £5,500. The other one is about 6300 so it just depends what size bale it is that will uh, affect the price of the bale. But yeah, hopefully it's going to be you know sixty to seventy thousand pounds. That'd be good. That's what we need to rent the forestry equipment for next week. There are eleven bales. That's how many we did. So it's an odd number, but it's still six thousand pounds or more extra. So once this one is on the trailer, we can strap it all up and we'll be able to do the same manoeuvre into the bale cell point. Apparently, if you take these to the biogas plant or the, the BGA, um, they are considerably more expensive. I just don't know if it's worth it because the price of them already is unrealistic. So to get even more for them might seem a bit wrong. But yeah, let's uh, fob that up. And we'll jump out and get into the Ford tractor. And I'm going to press B again. That straps them all on, as you can see. Uh, we can then adjust the unload side, and we need to have it most likely to the back. But I'm going to switch that off, so I don't do it accidentally. Um, and yeah, but let's turn the engine on and drive over to the store. So you've probably noticed this is a bit of a finishing off episode where we just try and get as much money back as we can. We actually have a lot of bales still in storage, but they kind of need to stay there. What did I hit? Hmm, I'm guessing that was a collision which was sticking out from the hedge. Yeah, they, they still need to be there because obviously the, the farm is going to continue even if we're not doing a series on it. Um, and they're still going to need their feed the animals on here. Being able to ratchet strap the bales onto the trailer though just adds so much more to it. I've said this before but it's true because if you don't have like a modded trailer you have to just rely on the physics of the game and the bales usually, or always in my case, fly about 50 feet into the air and 50 feet horizontally across the map and you rarely see them again. So actually being able to keep them on the trailer is a massive bonus really. Anyway here we are again at Homeland, let's do our manoeuvre. I look forward to seeing the price, I might be disappointed or it might be what I was expecting to get for them. Yeah, also at home then we've got the water fill point, diesel refill. I think that is the grain cell point. There is the straw cell point and something else just there. Possibly the milk down the side there. Oh no, it's the wall. Yeah, see, this is the place to be. Right, are you ready? Let's see how much money we're going to get for these. I need to make sure they don't spawn behind the shed. That would be very wasteful. Right, it should be at least £60,000 if things are going well. I'm a bit disappointed, I have to say. Hmm, £169. Well, that was an anticlimax, it has to be said. I can't 
help but get the feeling that I did something seriously wrong there. Really? 169 pounds? I think someone's fixed the price for the silage bales. We've got the realistic price for them. Oh well. We've still got loads of silage in storage, so we can just go and sell all that in the BGA. Um, but yes, that is, uh, that is fairly disappointing. I'll tell you what, between this episode and next week, what I'll do is I'll get the JCB, I'll sell everything we have in the silage pit, and that should be about 100 to 150,000 pounds. We'll totally empty it, and then we'll have loads of money next week for buying or renting the forestry equipment. But yeah, that is amazing. I'm surprised no one pointed that out to me when I was doing this before, but maybe it's just me. Who knows? Anyway, thank you for watching the video, and I apologise for that very disappointing ending. Hmm. But until next week, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.